Hey everybody, it's Mike here from The Art of Guitar. Today we're going to pay tribute to Eddie Van Halen, one of my biggest influences growing up. I remember when I was a kid, my dad had the 8-track, and I was listening to Eruption. I couldn't believe that was a guitar, and I think that sparked a little bit of interest in me that uh, eventually evolved into me wanting to play guitar. But I just didn't know how he was doing all that crazy stuff, so I basically bought one of his books and uh, went crazy from there. Muted arpeggios are actually really cool sounding. All you have to do, if you know what an arpeggio is, it's just a chord played one note at a time like this. <laughs> But if you palm mute them with your right hand, side of your palm, remember it's not the flat part, it's the side, and you play them, you get a little bit of a sharper tone. Check this out. Now for some of these examples, I'll be playing something similar to the real songs from Van Halen, but other ones I'll just be making things up and just showing you what the techniques are. But uh, this is one of them where it's pretty close to the real song. We do have a lot of delay and effects going on. I just want to let you know right away that we have delay, like I just said some uh, phase going on and some flanger and then we have compression and distortion so those are the main four effects i'm using with a lot of these uh, licks so getting back to muted arpeggios then all you have to do is palm mute do the very same thing and you get kind of a cool sound so there's a lot going on there like i said i have the delay going on and if i added a little bit of phase to that it sounds even closer to the real thing but the most important idea behind this is just, it's not really the effects we're going for, it's the fact that you're muting while you're playing arpeggios. Another really cool technique that Eddie Van Halen likes to use to cover some space, uh, I've covered this in other videos too, because a lot of great guitar players do this. They use an open string as a pedal tone as they like to slide around on a, on a different string to create different sounds. So for example, if you play open E over this whole thing, by the way, all of this is tuned down half a step. If you were to play open E, and then go to the B string, for example, let's say the fifth fret, and just move around using whatever scale you choose. In this case, I'll just pick an E minor scale. And put them together, listen how it sounds. With a little bit of phase, I'm gonna be saying that a lot today. So compare that with if you just did the single note. Yes, I took the phaser off, but you get the idea that it's kind of thin. As soon as I add that open string with it, you get the awesome sound of the vibrations kind of fighting each other in certain ways. It's kind of cool. I like to call this the flat five flutter. It's kind of hard to say, but Usually when guitar players do this technique, um, we've already covered this in a couple of other, uh, at least this first idea in a couple of other lessons. Uh, let's see you're just going like this in pentatonic. Basically I'm going to the second string, 12th fret, 15th fret, doing a hammer-on pull-off combination, and then going to the third string, 14th fret, and creating a motif pattern. Or as one of my um, subscribers mentioned, an ostinato pattern. I like that. Okay, so now if you were to change the bottom note, so if you were to change this third string 14th fret, which is A typically, now it's going to be A flex, so we're tuned on half a step. If we move that up to the 15th fret, you get what's called the flat five note in that pentatonic scale. So you guys might not understand that completely. Some of you guys might, but if you don't, uh, it's all about intervals that we cover on our website. Here's the scale with the flat five added to it. <laughs> Very important note, it creates the blue scale out of the minor pentatonic if you add that note. Okay, so if we go to that note instead, we get this sound. That's a big part of his sound, of Randy Rhodes' sound. A lot of people use that flat five. All right, this is a really cool effect. You're probably hearing some crazy sounds right now. Okay, I'll try to mute them. If you use flanger, if you use phaser, and you just get as many effects going at one time, and you start to scrape your palm against the strings, you get kind of a cool effect. Um, Eddie Van Halen uses this rhythmically in a really cool way. Some people just do really quick pick slides or hand scrapes across the strings, but he does this palm movement where it's like he's chopping the strings with the side of his hand, like a palm mute except moving. <laughs> crazy sound. 
I think I just like sandpapered the side of my hand off there. I am kind of blending a flanger with a phaser, but it's not exactly the sound he gets. He gets a very extreme sound, but play around a little bit. You might have the right combination or hit on the right combination and it'll sound great. All right, when you're bending a string, it's fun to reach over with the right hand and just tap basically a hammer on with your other hand on one of the other frets. So let's say I bend in A minor pentatonic. I just go like. Well, I can reach over and tap any fret I want as long as, you know, as long as it sounds good to you in the context. You can also pick a scale, like E minor in this case, and follow it. So check this out. And it makes it sound kind of cool. It's impossible to play Van Halen without artificial harmonics. Now, like I said before, I didn't want to teach artificial harmonics in this lesson because it's a pretty detailed instruction that we cover on the website. But... If you do it the way I do it, I hold my pick normally, and when I pick, I don't scrape the bottom of my thumb on the string like a lot of people do. I actually touch it with the side of my knuckle, which is kind of my special way to do it and to teach it. And over time, you just feel it right, and it just happens instantly. So if you know your pinch harmonics, you can already do this. When you're bending, just add a quick artificial harmonic, and it'll sound a lot more exciting. So instead of doing something like this, you get more like this. If your solo is boring and you throw one of those in, instant excitement right there. If you have a whammy bar, tremolo bar on your guitar, it's fun to just hold out a note or a chord and just basically hit it. I call them bar dips. And you could do that with harmonics. You could be like... Or you could do it at the end of a run. You could do it with a chord. So another way to do this now is we're going to play octaves and as we slide we're going to do a bar dip instead of picking. So we're going to play an octave, if you know how to do that in this case we'll start in C and then we'll jump up an octave to this C, play them together, remember you have to mute that string in the middle, that's the trick. Hit that, uh, dip the bar, slide up, dip the bar, slide up and make that part of your climb, okay? So watch this. <laughs> This one I like to call the cathedral effect. I've heard a lot of guitar players do this. I don't know if he was one of the first ones to do it, probably, knowing him. But all you do is you do a volume swell on your guitar, which is you play a note. In this case, we're gonna hammer on a note and just turn the volume up as we hit the note. It creates like a cello effect. And then we add delay. Right now I have about this much delay. I have it feeding back a few times, but you could just have it feed back once if you want to clean it up a little bit. So the trick is, is to hit the note, bring up the volume, bring it back down, hit another note, and then if you do it in the right timing, you have a really cool delay effect happen, the cathedral effect. So that's not actually the, the way the song goes. I'm just showing off the effect right now. So just to show you, you could choose any scale you want and make it sound cool. So you could do like C major. <laughs> scale you go the trick is you have to stay with it as far as the timing goes otherwise you lose that cool rhythm that's happening with the delay coming back and you see with the volume swell it just makes it sound more like a cello which is very cool if you're a member of our site you know we like to call certain bar chord shapes by form numbers, so this will be called the second form. It's basically the, the major form that's based off of the A shape that we do. And when you start to learn how to bar, bar that, you can go across and play any bar chord that you choose. In this case, we'll go up to the seventh fret. We'll just play an E major chord using the second form. And what Eddie does really well is he could take this idea and just start to alter it a little bit to get different chords from the same shape. And uh, like I said before, I won't go into deep explanation of it, but just watch how adding a few notes, taking a few away can really sound cool. That's my own interpretation of Panama for this video, but you get the idea. It doesn't matter where I go, I can make that happen. 
if you're adding like a fourth to it or if you're taking it away making things major sevens, there's a lot of different intervals you could toss in there. But it does sound cool based off the same form, doesn't it? Play around with that, you might find something really cool to use on your own too. One of my favorite things to do, you know how we talked about bend taps where we're bending and tapping? Now we can bend and do tap harmonics. So we'll do the same idea as before where we bent up, let's say an A minor pentatonic, that area that we love to teach in. Bend it, and we used to tap at the 12th fret to get some cool sounds. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually jump an octave higher with our right hand and we're gonna tap, so in this case we'll tap here at the 19th fret if we're bending the seventh fret. Okay, it's gonna always be 12 frets up for now. We're gonna bend that up, we're gonna touch the string, so we're gonna do like a, a touch harmonic, tap harmonic I like to call it too, which is basically just like a natural harmonic but you're, you're executing it by tapping it. Here's what we're gonna do. First we'll do it without bending, so we'll go. So you can do that anywhere. You can go down to the 5th fret and just tap to the 17th fret of the same string. 3rd fret, 15th fret, tap. And move around. So the octave is the most effective place to do it when you're beginning. But later you can go 5 frets higher and tap, 7 frets higher and tap. That's what Eddie does quite a bit. Okay, here's a little bit of those 5th fret, 7th frets added to it. Check this out. Here's an octave. 5th fret, 7th fret. It all comes through. Okay, we keep talking about motifs or ostinato or whatever you want to call it. And uh, I just think of this as like a circular pattern that you can add to your licks. And this is very signature Eddie Van Halen. Uh, it's during Eruption where he starts doing this crazy pull-off. Uh, open string thing. It's really cool. So when I play it, what I like to do is think of it as we're going to go to the 8th fret and the 5th fret on the 2nd string. First we're going to play the open high E. Then we're going to do a pull off, 8-5-0. Then we're going to reach down and hit the 8th fret of the 3rd string. That's that flat 5 sound again that I was talking about from before. If you put those together, I do it my own way by the way. I do a little Travis picking. I don't know if Eddie does this, but here's how I do it. That sound cool with the flat, uh, the phase pedal. Here's what it sounds like slow without the phase. Legato was something I learned mostly from Jose Atriani, but when I started to apply it to Van Halen, I noticed that there's a lot of crossover there. Of course, Van Halen did all this stuff early on, but I learned from Satriani first then work backwards when I tried to learn this on guitar. And we could take a simple scale. Let's say we're just taking like an E minor. We're gonna use what I call the G shred scale though to play the form. And if you don't know that scale, our website has it once again. Okay, so if I go to the middle of this form, let's say the third string, fourth fret, fifth fret, seventh fret, and I just did this hammer on pull off technique, picking only once and letting my fingers do the rest. That already sounds pretty cool. Now you can add some picking if you want to, like I'll reach down and maybe hit this seventh fret of the fourth string. I got my weird circular picking that I do, but you get the idea, you're doing legato and you're just adding another note to it. Uh, Eddie likes to do it in certain, I call them symmetrical hand positions. So he might just take the 11th fret, the 12th fret, and the 14th fret, and just do kind of a walk down, a walk up, using different legato techniques. So he might be doing a series of hammer-ons and pull-offs, or he might be picking a little bit, but he likes to mix it up a little bit. I still consider it legato because it's all pretty smooth. The first time I tried to do tapping, I went right to this pattern. I don't know if it's because I heard eruption at such a young age, but what I like to do is, let's go to the second string, 12th fret, 5th fret, and 8th fret. We're going to tap the 12th fret, pull off with the tapping finger. So you're going to do tapping, pulling off to the 5th fret, and then tapping with your pinky, or tapping, hammering on, it's essentially the same thing, but when it's on the left hand, it's hammering on, when it's on the right hand, it's tapping. We're going to hammer on to the 8th fret, and it's going to create this 
triple cycle. Dun 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 dun. The secret is is to speed it up so it sounds very smooth. Here we go. That's the idea. If you add a little bit of phase to it, it sounds cool. Once again, I don't have the Eddie Van Halen phaser. I just have the phase 90, so it's not as extreme, but it's still pretty cool. One thing I'll never forget is the first time I heard someone do a big whammy bar dive on the E string. It used to be known as a dive bomb. I always picture a dive bomb having to end with a huge schlick. kind of Megadeth thing or something. But you can just hit the E string, dip it way down till it's basically flopping around down there, and then slowly bring it up, you get the Eddie Van Halen sound. Bar dips are back. That's all that is. fun to play around with, you know, just see how much slack you can get on a string and bring it up. So I have this thing called the finger splits that I like to do, and it really gets my fingers to open up when I play, and that's good for songs like Hot For Teacher, and sometimes Eddie does these insane stretches with his hand. So if you can go from the third fret to the seventh fret comfortably, you're good. If you can't, you gotta work on your stretches a little bit. So what we're gonna do is we're going to do a tapping pattern where we tap the twelfth fret, we're gonna pull that off to the seventh fret, to the third fret, to open and come back, and we're gonna create this cast skating motion, okay? <laughs> It takes a while to get the timing right on that. Sometimes you sound like this. Your pinky wants to keep coming back really fast. Really work on that cascade. Now move the left hand up two frets. So basically, I'm not trying to teach you how to teach you hot for teacher. That was tough to say, but I'm just showing you how extreme that stretch is. Steve Vide likes to do this next thing I call the cascading tap, and it's really fun because I do it all in the same frets as I go down the strings. Remember, going this way is down on guitar, going this way is up, going this way is down, going this way is up. That's why guitar players are crazy. One of the reasons. What we're gonna do is we're going to tap on the twelfth fret. We're basically gonna be pulling off to the eighth fret, the seventh fret, the fifth fret. And then we just hammer with our pinky on the next string, 8th fret. Then we basically bring our tapping finger to that 2nd string and we do it all over again and we just keep walking down until we get to about the middle of the neck. You can go through the whole thing if you want to, but I like to just go down maybe 4 strings. This is very steve ish if you've ever heard. I think it's the audience is listening, which is very close to a Van Halen type thing. Check this out. That's what it is slow, if you speed it up. That's if you put it in context. Something Eddie likes to do a lot is play with natural harmonics. We talked about tapping natural harmonics, but you can actually pick them too, obviously. And that's when you're not pressing down, remember, you're just barely touching the string at certain points, right above the frets. Remember, right above the metal bars, okay? The frets. And the 12th fret, the 7th fret, the 5th fret are the best places to get started because they come out the strongest. So here's, here's what it sounds like. You could play them in groups like that, but you can also play them individually. Those are really great to throw in for fills, I like to call them. So let's say you're playing a riff and all of a sudden you just want to fill it in with something. That was kind of Eddie Van Halen-like. All right, I had to practice for this one. It's the extended left hand licks. And when I keep saying extended, I mean normally guitar players go four frets over maybe five if it's, if it's a crazy lick or something. But Eddie does this trick in one of his songs where he reaches from the 12th fret to the 19th fret. So right away, go ahead and just give that a try to see if you can even do it. Now, 
I'm not gonna really teach it, but I'm gonna show you the technique involved in how, how your left hand has to move to make this technique work. So that's pretty extreme, right? Now I'm not doing it spot on. It's kind of like it, but I just want to show you how extreme his pinky has to reach sometimes. I did not think that was the way it was done. I thought he just did this and tapped it. That's how I actually played it live one time. But when I watched him live, he held his guitar all funny and his fingers actually stretched. And that's when I knew he was an alien. So check this out. Here's something fun that you can add instantly if you already know how to tap. After you tap on a note, go ahead and slide up while keeping the pressure and you get a tap slide is what I call it. So an easy way to start off is just to do a basic tap. And then after you tap, slide, and then when you get to about the top of the neck or wherever you end up, pull off. Isn't that a cool effect? Your middle finger or whatever you use to tap might feel a little bit sore after doing that because you're basically dragging it across a metal string that it's not used to doing. Kind of like when you start tapping in the first place. Your, the tip of your finger feels kind of sore, like you stuck a needle through it or something. This is gonna happen a little bit with pick tap sliding, pick tap sliding, tap sliding, but you'll get used to it quick and pretty soon you'll actually have a callus on your middle finger as well. So it's kind of cool. <laughs> Falling in love with this phaser. Tap harmonics come in a lot of different shapes and sizes, if you will, different techniques. You could take your right hand and you can actually tap across the 12th frets to get a group harmonic, if you will. Totally fine. You can also use your thumb to tap like the side of your knuckle. This took me forever to practice. It's like practicing drums. I started to try to play a little bit of Mean Street and I just couldn't get the rhythm down correctly. I'll show it to you a little bit slow and so you can really see what's going on the way I learned it. I don't know if it's 100% correct, but. That sound cool? Now the bit, the most important part to me, I still haven't gotten down perfect, but I want to show you that you can do group taps with your right hand, is the left hand muting in between some of those hits. So the main lesson is tapping harmonics with your right hand in groups, and with your thumb, but don't forget the importance of muting with your left hand doing the left hand thump. It's kind of like a flamenco guitar type technique. I'm playing the congas or something. It's kind of cool. You can utilize this technique right away. Just like some people like to do pick slides, which Eddie Van Halen does too. I'm not going to count that as a technique because I've taught it so many times in these videos that you already know it. But if you were to go to the third string and just start doing pull-offs, let's say the fourth fret to the second fret to open with just your left hand, kind of Randy Rhodes style. Take the side of your right hand and basically bring it down the strings as you're doing that. You get a, a harmonic slide is what I call it. You could do it on the third string, fourth string, whatever string you want. You could even do combinations of that, but just try to touch the string and move it down. It doesn't matter if it's with the side of your palm or if it's with your fingers or what, but check it out. Basically you're activating the string and then you're hitting all the harmonics by touching them as you slide down. Cool sound. This might seem kind of like no big deal, but it sounds really cool if you're about to go into a solo and you play a note and then you bring up the volume with your volume knob. It's this kind of sound. It's just an added dynamic that you can do. So you're bringing a sound from zero all the way up to 100 before you get going. You can also do this with a volume pedal, but I prefer using the guitar's volume because I feel like I have much more control over it. And I don't know, it's just a one less pedal you have to buy, I guess. 
Eddie has great rhythm, obviously. He could take his right hand and he could do a couple muted rakes and throw them just in the right context to make the beat feel even better. Check this out. <laughs> So without that, it's not as exciting. The whole really gets you in the groove with the riff. So he's good at doing that in the best possible places. He doesn't overdo it. Like I do sometimes when I'm playing, I'll just throw in too many rakes to kind of keep with the rhythm because I play drums too, so I like to do that. But he uses it very tastefully, especially in that run. Don't forget to work on your left hand's ability to really go crazy with hammer-ons and pull-offs. It might take a lot of exercises. But one thing I like to implement is my round picking that I like to do. I don't know if Eddie does it all the time, but he sounds like he's doing it because it's very fluid sounding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a pull-off from the 18th to the 15th fret. I'm sorry, the 20th to the 17th fret in this case. And I'm going to basically do a pull-off. I'm going to come down and hit the 20th fret of the second string and return back in a rounded fashion using picking. So my trick to the pick is to do an upstroke for the pull-off, then do a downstroke for the second string, and then another downstroke for the first string. And if you keep doing that, your pick feels like it's going in a circle. So implementing circular picking is huge when you're playing Van Halen because there's a lot of times we're just going crazy up there like that. Okay, those are my Eddie Van Halen techniques for you. Remember, we're not always using them in the context of their songs, but used individually, you could take some of them and use them for your own playing, which is always my goal for you guys. Okay, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and the Art of Guitar if possible, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks.